Welcome back to Maury's Music. Today we're here with Brendan from Martin Guitar. Brendan was nice enough to bring some Modern Deluxe guitars here to check out, and we're going to find out what's all about the Modern Deluxe series and what's different about these guitars. What's it all about, Maury? That's, that's the big question. So, on the surface, we look at these and um, I think it can be difficult to tell, and that's why it's important to, to talk about these. So, it basically looks like a, like a 28 with some herringbone. And a lot of what we're going to talk about is what's going on on the inside of these guitars. Okay. Um, one of the really important things to realize, I was trying to think of an analogy, and uh, last night I, I was at a party at a really nice old uh, mansion in Bethlehem. And uh, the, host, the hostess took us into, around the house to, to see it, just a beautiful yeah. old house, and took us into the kitchen. It had a modern kitchen. And I was thinking this morning, that's huh. kind of what this guitar is all about. This is a, and the house is from 1929, which is a good year Ooh. for guitars, right? Okay, sure. But this is a, this is based off an old design that's really sturdy and really strong and always done well, and it just has some modern things. It's got a kitchen that's uh, souped up a little bit. That's an interesting way to say it. So now, talking about going from an authentic to this guitar, I know a lot of our customers have some concerns, whether they are founded or not. Mm -hmm. uh, about the fact that you can't adjust the truss rod on, a, on an authentic, does this become that guitar for customers who want an authentic, but the only thing they're not comfortable with is the fact that they can't adjust it for humidity and temperature? Can you speak to how this is different? Great, great question, and uh, I fully agree. I know that people do have concerns about that. I've talked to customers myself who are concerned. Ultimately, temperature, humidity, and guitar maintenance come into play when you have an authentic or yeah. a vintage instrument. Um, even more so than, than an adjustable instrument. Uh, but that is definitely one of the advantages here, that you have a lot of authentic features. You have some of the DNA from an authentic sure. instrument, and we'll get into some of those points, but you certainly have adjustability with the rod. So we touched on the adjustable truss rod. What is different about the glue uh, used in this guitar? On this guitar? Great, yeah. great question. So the, the top and the bracing were done with a, with a protein glue. And again, we're bringing in features from the, the Authentic Series. Mm -hmm. Authentic Series guitars are specifically hide glue. And we won't get into all the details on, on what these glues are specifically, but hide glue on the Authentic, um, there's a little bit more affordability in using the, the protein glue on the top and the bracing. Okay. And that's really where you want that glue to react and, and bring the essence of the top out. That's really important. Okay, and how does that contribute to tone as far as when you, when you speak about how the guitar is put together, mm -hmm. and if an authentic, if if we can agree, and that's the big if, if authentic is made the best way with authentic hide glue construction throughout, mm -hmm. and going backwards to standard series being none, where, on a scale of one to ten, where would you put the importance of the fact that this guitar has got an upgrade in the right places as far as the protein? Great question. So if we, if we talk about that scale and when we're saying an authentic is a, is a 10, mm -hmm. um, I'd put the, the protein glue on here at a, at a strong 8. Oh, really? And it's it's really close. Okay. Yeah. Now, there there are differences in the two guitars. And if if we did a uh, ABC from, you know, OM28, OM28 Modern Deluxe and an OM28 Authentic, sure. we would certainly hear differences. And, there, and there's value in getting into the Authentic series, but again, it's a little bit more expensive and, and you don't have the adjustability. Right. Um, this, this glue that's on this guitar is just really, it's in the right place. It's, it's on the top. Okay. Um, it's not the whole instrument, and that's where part of it becomes less expensive. And the type of glue that we're using here has uh, been used, uh, violin makers have been using it for a long time. Oh, wow. And, uh, repair people as well. So it's, not, it's huh. nothing new. It's a little bit new to the guitar world, uh, but there are some luthiers who have been using it for a couple of years okay. now. We talked about the truss rod. We talked about uh, the glue. What is that? What is this thing? This is a carbon fiber bridge plate. So this is definitely different from what we've, we've done in the past. We've experimented with some carbon fiber. Having it on the bridge plate creates a really, really stable bridge plate. Uh, traditional bridge plates are, are maple. Um, most of what we're doing right now is maple. There's stuff in, in history okay. that's different, but yeah. let's, let's just say maple versus this. Not going to talk about the big rosewood thing? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Okay. Another time. But there is some wood in here, and, and I think that's one of the really important things in showing this and talking about it today is that people understand it's a, it's a little sandwich. It's a carbon fiber sandwich, okay. and uh, certainly don't want to break your teeth on it, but huh. there's some good Adirondack in the center there. So you get Adirondack coupled with the... Um, the carbon fiber on the outside, huh. really, really strong plate, 
Um, stability under the bridge, uh, that's a little bit different than a standard maple plate. Also longevity in the holes. And um, so it takes a long time to do this, but especially if you're not stringing your guitar properly and making sure those ball ends are seated, oh. you start to wear on that plate a little bit. Sure. And over an extended period of time, you're going to get a little wear under there. So this is huh. really going to hold up for a long time. Is it a dumb question to ask if there was R&D involved in the reverse of that or different? Like, I, I don't know enough about that to know why Adirondack would be in the center. Mm -hmm. did, they, they, did you guys try Adirondack? fiber Adirondack. Were there, were there other uh, roads to, to where you got with this? Good question. I, I'm sure there were a lot of um, iterations of this. And, yeah. and you know, it's funny, these things that we talk about and we see on new guitars, they take years to come out with. So it doesn't happen sure. overnight. Um, having not been in R&D during that time, I don't know what other materials were, were utilized or if the opposite Okay, effect was yeah. done with carbon fiber, but I'm sure, sure there was a lot of research huh. into this being the, the most compatible method for creating a bridge plate with carbon fiber. So that's more of a Tim Teal question, maybe? That's a Tim Teal question. <laughs> we'll get him another time. <laughs> and uh, I, I gravitate towards this next question you'll probably see coming. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite pickups, my very favorite acoustic pickup these days, is the Trance Audio Amulet. Mm -hmm. uh, K&K is another popular one. The trend to go to bridge plate transducers is getting more popular every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked Trance, you know, do they have any suggestions or uh, can they impart any experience in what they're, first of all, will it adhere the same way? Mm -hmm. And they replied to say, I don't know, try it. I'm, okay, <laughs> the, I will be the one that tries it. And I know that some of the designs now that Martin's putting into their guitars, the Fishman uh, that has the RVT Enhance, Correct. that Enhance is a bridge plate, mm -hmm. uh, sensor right the lr bags anthem uses lyric mm -hmm. they, they attach to this if my customers want to put a soundboard transducer in a modern deluxe can they and yes you, really yeah so no absolutely no no problem um couple of things so you, you're going to install a pickup basically the same way that you always have and, and we've tried the two that we install mm -hmm. the the fisherman and the lr bags and they were both it was an effective installation and sonically the only differences we heard were because of the guitar being different. So oh, wow. we, we didn't hear we didn't hear anything that said, "Wow, that pickup's not going to work on there," or "It sounds so much better on there." But it works, mm. and that's the point: is that you can put the pickup in, and it should sound fine. Nice. We don't have specific experience with some of the other ones, mm -hmm. but my guess is that they're going to react the same way. And I think that's part of uh, again, we'd have to talk to Tim, but I think that's part of why there's a little bit of wood in there. Um, if this uh, were solid carbon fiber, it would probably react differently, would be my guess. Okay. And then from an installation standpoint, carbon fiber can be uh, finished like anything with um, varying degrees of finish or, or texture. And if you feel the top of that one, and we might even pick up that sound on camera, it's, um, it, it almost has a wood fibrous feel. So it's going to it really adhere does. or allow something to adhere to it pretty huh. well. Somebody might say what rosewood sounds like versus mahogany versus koa. Mm -hmm. Does carbon fiber sound a certain way? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's yeah. um, the interesting thing about the modern deluxe is that there there are a number of small things going on, and they're all culminating in this great sound. Right. So to say how much of it is the bridge plate, how much of it is the bridge pins, which we'll get into. Ah uh, yes. Um, that that's difficult. Um, but from a st uh, stability standpoint and ease of installation and just having this thing hold that top the way it needs to yeah. hold it it's a great great bridge plate because that's where everything's happening if you obviously picture where the strings are making the, the vibration of the string sets the bridge in motion the saddle mm -hmm. it's all that that's where it's happening right yeah, yeah. Right. tell me about these liquid metal bridge pins liquid metal bridge pins so on the surface and i'll hand that to you careful you. it's a little heavy <laughs> they're actually very light but um, right. the liquid metal is a, a molded pin, so it's metal that's molded into the shape of a pin. Because it's hot liquid that's being molded, it is, ready for this big word, amorphous. I wasn't ready. So, <laughs> you weren't ready for that. <laughs> amorphous is, um, it, it's non-granular. So if we, if we talk about bone, for example, okay. or, or ivory or something, um, there's going to be grain patterns in there. And, and sometimes bone will naturally have voids or 
spots that are more dense or less dense. Inconsistent? And inconsistent, yeah. Okay. Overall inconsistency. And that can affect the way the sound transmits, particularly in a saddle, less so in a pin. Uh, sure, sure. But with this material being amorphous and not oh. having any of that granulation in it, uh, it's just transmitting sound purely into the box and coming back out. Wow. And that makes me think of another question. Mm -hmm. Is there any talk of doing a saddle in this material? Well, I, I certainly had that question. I haven't had a chance to talk to Tim about that, mm. but that was one of my first thoughts. Um, I, I think that's already being investigated. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. As I asked it, I thought I, it's probably weeks away. Mm -hmm. but Good that, question. And I, I've, from speaking with Tim and reading up on these, uh, I think I understand correctly. These, when you hit them with sound, they don't absorb the same or maybe almost a negligible, negligible amount if you strike you know, a string with a plastic pin or a bone mm -hmm. pin, the, it sets the pin in motion and the pin keeps some. Mm -hmm. Am I right in reading that this gives you almost all of it back? Correct, okay. correct, yeah. So it's a matter of that amorphousness. What's the big word for that then, for, for not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have to look that one up, right. unless I just make something up. Oh. But um, definitely, well, that's cool, yeah, that's part yeah. of what the material does. Is the next thing the, tr the truss rod? Truss rod, sure. Let's talk about this. So, and we'll show two, for example. Now, of course, these are smaller truss rods than um, what you'd normally see on a full-size guitar. These are probably LX size or something. But here, here's a standard rod. And um, we well, can't capture this on camera, but we'll look at Maury's reaction when he picks it up. He feels the weight of that. It has, it has a little substance to it. It's not heavy, but it has if something to it. If I wasn't really, it. really strong, I would be, I'd be having a hard time. Good thing you ate your Wheaties this morning. <laughs> and then let's hand him the titanium rod. Uh, that's, There's a noticeable difference. That's very noticeable. Right. That's a little more noticeable than I expected, mm -hmm. actually. So that transmitting to how the guitar feels in your hand mm. and the ability to do this new neck shape that we'll talk about all comes from that rod. As much as I read up on this, I really thought they'd feel more similar. This is, mm -hmm. this is pretty drastic. It's pretty drastic. Wow. Yeah, we, we may be talking about fractions of an ounce, but it's noticeable in your hand and sure. again when you're holding the guitar you're gonna feel that that difference right away so is there truth to a big heavy bulky neck contributing to sound and if that is true can you explain the the intentions and benefits of a lighter rod mm -hmm. that's a good question uh, ultimately there are there are benefits to a big chunky neck so if we take an old um, uh, D28 or a D28 Authentic from 1937, 1939, okay. you know, one of those ones that yeah. we did, and they have those full thickness necks on them. There is something there. So there's there's more mass in the neck. Sound is going to transmit um, up the neck and, and back down differently than it would on a thinner neck. Okay. Um, but a thin neck is okay, and it, it's a lot of what the current player is is needing, mm -hmm. and we've developed a, a comfort with the comfort of a thinner neck. Yeah. Now, those big guitars from the, the 30s, they needed to be loud. They needed to be really loud. And you can still get that in an authentic if you need that. Um, huh. But today, especially if we're putting a pickup in a guitar, we don't necessarily need the same full projection that we used to get. We yeah. want most of it. Yeah. We still want to have a good sounding guitar, Absolutely. and we get that. But we also want to be comfortable, and this is a great way to do that. Tell me about the Evo frets, Brendan. Okay. These are the Evo frets. So we'll move this around in the light, and we can we can see the, the nice color on these. It's kind of a soft gold color, mm -hmm. um, but we need to be careful here because these are not gold frets. They're actually very hard. And I'll hand this to you, and I'll make a little, uh, a little meter here. So we have nickel frets, really good on, on the hardness scale. We have stainless steel frets. Okay very hard on the hardness scale. Sure. Right in between the two is this Evo fret wire. Huh. And the, the color actually comes from an infusion of copper. So it's more of a copper oh. uh, being blended in. So the, the color is through. So as your frets um, wear down a little bit or you need to get them worked on in 10 years, uh, that color's still going to be there. So it's not just a coating? Not a coating. Any, any change in the shape or the bevel of these one in the modern deluxe? No change in shape or bevel. Same size frets, Okay. just different material. Are these any harder to work on in the future? I, the Evo fret wire has been around for a while. I don't know exactly how long, but I, mm -hmm. I remember hearing about it probably 12 years ago. Oh, it's so no. Probably been around longer than that. Okay. So I think as soon as it, a repairman sees that wire, he knows uh, what he's getting into. Huh. That's sharp. It matches the gold tuners, right? 
matches the gold tuners. Yeah, it's a nice subtle um, goldish color underneath the strings on the fretboard. It doesn't. It's not real bright. It doesn't pop out at you, but it's there. Yeah, it's and it ties body. in the strings and the in the tuning machines. Sure, sure. Let's talk about the Adirondack bracing. Okay. Have a little sample here. So as we know, the top on these guitars is Sika VTS, but the bracing is Adirondack VTS. Ah. So this is the full uh, vintage tone system on these instruments, and of course, uh, adhered with the the protein glue in the middle. So you're getting a you're getting a full authentic top. It's it's all there. Yeah. Every, everything's torrified, and that combination of Adirondack and and Sika is is beautiful in tone. Huh. Check that out. Mm -hmm. And these two, of course, because they are torrified, they're contributing to the, the lightness of the guitar. Um, oh, so right, your right. customers out there who have all tried a, some type of 28 and some type of 18, yep. you know there's an inherent difference in how those two instruments feel. Mahogany's a lot lighter. To me, these modern deluxes, the three rosewood ones feel like an 18, like mahogany. They just feel okay, lighter overall. Sure. And the 18 feels like an authentic. It's wow. just really light. Yeah. All right, we talked about the truss rod, the Evo frets, <laughs> the protein glue, the bracing, the VTS top, the VTS braces. I feel like we're forgetting something. We are. This is this one really important feature on here um, that is probably contributing to the sound a little bit, but more of an aesthetic. Okay. And it's the fact that there's maple binding on here. Yes, this is something that we don't, we mm -hmm. haven't normally done in any of the standard series. This has typically been reserved for customs and special editions. Mm -hmm. Now I have, by the way, um, from the retired John Marshall, I have a D18 MB. Oh really? And I think it was from the mid '90s, and it was probably just a special run Ooh. maple binding guitar. Really? So that's the only one that I know of that huh. was kind of a standard series that had maple sure. binding. But again, typically this is a custom shop feature huh. um, that you're paying a little little extra for, oh, a little yeah. extra premium. So it's part of the package here. Hmm. And um, again, with the, with the glue and the sound transfer for from top to back, having a nice hard material on there is a is a bonus, and yeah. it looks great too. So real quick, run down when you're going from a standard series, mm -hmm. what are the benefits? Why would somebody go to a modern deluxe? What do they get? Right. Um, mainly you're getting you're getting tone. You're getting a tone that's much different. And, and when yeah. you get the opportunity to play one of these guitars, you, you realize it. And hopefully we can translate that a little bit on, on video. But you get this thing in your hand, and it's just, it, it, it's an incredible tone. It, it rings. Um, there's great sustain wonderful clarity and balance but the other thing that you're getting is a really really comfortable guitar so it, it it's not a guitar not that that any guitars necessarily are but you're certainly not fighting with this one mm -hmm. it's giving you something back and that contributes to the overall experience of playing mm -hmm. um, the other one that we we didn't touch on and it's a good thing we talked about the binding and the overall experience of the instrument is the neck shape oh right so, right this has the OM45 Deluxe neck? Yes, yeah, that's that's really important. And it's um, it's subtle and it's unique, but it's one of those things that when you get it in your hand, you say, oh, yeah. I, I feel like right here, the shoulders are very, very skinny. Mm -hmm. And it's not true everywhere else on this neck. I feel very differently about this neck here than I do here. Is it my imagination or is that a... Is that different about these guitars? Because I don't remember a lot of other Martins where the impression I get at the 10th fret is very different from the first fret. Mm -hmm. is... Sorry, folks, Maury's gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. So. There, there's something a little bit different going on here, and it was based off of that uh, guitar that's in the museum. So it's a, first of all, it's a uh, performance taper, so it, it's very consistent all of the way down. You get that comfort level. But you have a, a very slight, and I'm almost cautious to even say V, because this isn't a V neck, yeah. but it does have a little bit of a little bit of a V nature here, okay. and it's asymmetrical. So what you're feeling, and you're exactly right, Maury, is that uh, it favors the bass side, the um, the shape of the neck in the back favors the bass side a little bit here, and then it smooths out and it comes more towards the center. So okay. exactly what you're feeling is what's happening huh. with this guitar. Well, I'm really impressed in general by the series. You have the OM28, the Triple O28, 
the D28 and D18, is that D18. right? D18, that, that's right. Four, four models for now. That's all I'll say. Key, keyword is for now. now. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't dare put four together and like stop right there. Please, you don't have to tell me what you're not allowed to say, but please don't tell me <laughs> you've made your mind up to stop at four. Because I, I, that covers a lot of bases, but I, I, I hope and expect the, the, for that family of the Martin mm -hmm. line to grow pretty, pretty I, I think when people experience this guitar, they're going to be asking for love the yeah. guitar and you know I, I got the d i'd really love a double o or yep. you know wh whatever the options may be what would you like to see next off, off what would i like to see off the record um, not that you're deciding but if if you could tell somebody at martin this should be the next modern deluxe what would you pick hmm i, I would love to see this um just because we recently introduced the uh a couple of slope shoulders i think it'd be really Ooh. cool to see this dss as a dss you heard it here first just my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to play a couple? Sure. Mm -hmm. 